Hi everyone, Adrian here. Welcome to Wild Bush and Grit. Continuing my series on the uh, 1000 yard shot, how I'm getting there. Uh, today I want to talk about powder charge, okay? And specifically how I weight powder for these loads and what would be the effect of variation in the, char in the charge. Super important, I'm not saying it's not, but I think for long range shooter, absolutely. For hunters, 100, 200 yards, I think we're overthinking a lot, and I'll explain that in a second. How good is a beam scale compared to an electronic one, or do you need a lab scale? Do you need a Sartorius? Do you need to spend $1,000 to get like extreme precision for your powder charge? Short answer, no, you do not. A beam scale is actually quite unbeatable for the price. For years, I've been using here this little Hornady electronic scale here works great and I actually bought the RCBS, the beam scale, the M1000 here I don't know, for the folklore, you know, I, I kind of like the look, I love beautiful objects I know, stupid Is it more accurate than the lab um, scale you can get out there for the price? I can't talk for lab scale, but if I have one kernel too much on that beam, I'll know Here's one kernel in. It moved. Another one. Two. And it moved. And another one. Three. That's the whole important thing because what you're gonna do, you're gonna cut curl in half? No, one kernel too much, the scale it tells you, and then you can readjust. Now you may be thinking, oh yeah, but a beam scale too slow, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like you wanna go fast. If you wanna go fast, I think you're missing the point. But what I can see is I'm actually faster with the M1000 and this trickler here that I was on the Hornady electronic scale. So what I do is, so, I'm using the perfect measure here from Lee. Now I'm having a look at how much... I'm adjusting the dipper, another uh, dipper, the trickler, and voila! 20 seconds per load. In my book, it's pretty good, and it's faster than this. Uh, the problem I had with that is you will add a little bit, you will you have to wait because, you know, the way it's, uh, it builds, it will go up and back down, and then it will stabilize, then you think you're good, and then it will drop half a grain. It's like, what is this? Then you have to draw, add a little, a little bit too much, anyway. anyway. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely faster using the, uh, the beam scale, and it's just because the feedback of that, the, the, the beam here with the magnetic, uh, dampener at the end, super stable, goes, wobbles a little bit, and then stabilizes quite precisely. You know where you're at, and then you add or you remove. A couple of uh, con for this model. The first thing is you have to be exactly at eye level to make sure to, to make accurate reading. You can be standing up or above and then looking at it and then kind of guess it. You really, really, really have to be at eye level. Actually, my setup here is not good. This is how I reload. I should have this high up eye level where I can really quickly read because right now when I'm reloading, I need to bet lower. Okay, good. I adjust, then I come back and then I adjust. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tiring for the legs, you know, going up and down, but good for cardio. Sometime, and this happened, and you have to be very careful, is when you're ready to take your powder, you'll do this, and it jumps. And I don't know if you noticed, but the weight here jumped one grain forward. So you have to be really, really, really careful every time, making sure all your, your, um, your measurements are proper before taking, you know, the, the powder and like, anyway, yeah, you have to double check all the time. So that's one thing to, to double check. See, it did it again. So be careful. For my actual load, 
for a 1000 yard shot, I think I dialed in the component that I will be using. It's going to be N550, Burger Bullet, Peterson Brass, and Federal Gold Match. Gold Medal, sorry. Match. Match grade uh, primers. How I came to this conclusion? Easy. I did ladder test and lots and lots of ladder tests. Let's get down in the nitty gritty details now. What a ladder test is. The ladder test is a way for you to find out which powder charge is optimal for the primer, the bullet, the case, your rifle. Uh, there's probably something else that I forgot, but anyway. It's to find the perfect powder charge for the bullet at the velocity you want to send it in. And the way to find that is you will test powder charge at a different increment, okay? So for example, you can start at 39 for bullet one. Bullet two is going to be 39.2 grain. Bullet three is going to be 39.4 and so on. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 40. 40.2, 40.4, you get the picture. So you can load 10 bullets like this. You go out in the range, you measure the velocity of each. When you come back at home, you put all that data in the graph. And what you want is you want a range of two, three shots at least with stable velocities. Meaning that as the power charge increase, your velocity stays stable. All right, and this is a node. And that means that at that charge, with all the components that you have, your velocity will vary very, very slightly with each incrementation. And this is perfect for your, you guessed it, standard deviation. Why? It's because once you've set that charge, you will know that you have very little variation in pressure from a charge to the other. So you could make minute mistake here and here, you know, and it will not matter much because you have found that really nice flat node where point, uh, where point 0.6 grain of powder doesn't have a lot of influence on your load. This is perfect because now you can lock that in and then you can focus on other aspect of your reloading, okay? Sitting dead, for example, but we'll talk about that later. There is one, there is one thing that I wasn't thinking about when I, I was doing this testing in is the velocity at which my bullet will hit the target, okay? In hunting, we're always thinking about that, but usually we don't hunt at a thousand yard, we hunt at 100, 200 yard stuff. Most of the time, 90% of the time where I hunt, it's under 100. And what's important here is energy. On paper, you're like, nah, I don't need energy, right? Wrong, you do. <laughs> not to kill the paper, but there is a different, like, you need velocity, not energy. You need velocity before you reach the target. The reason is when you're sending the bullet, the bullet goes supersonic, okay? You're faster than the sound, uh, than the speed of the sound. As the bullet loses its momentum, its velocity drops, drops, drops. And at some point, it will become subsonic, meaning it will go below the speed of sound. Back, you know, Mac 1. The issue here is while that bullet transition from supersonic to subsonic, there is a zone called transonic. And weird things happen to your ballistic coefficient and to your bullet. So your bullet gets destabilized a lot at that, at that moment. When your bullet goes from that supersonic into the subsonic, you have like a 200 feet per second window where your bullet starts to do weird stuff. For me, the cutoff was 13, uh, 1350 feet per second. So I want my bullets to reach 1000 yards before it goes below one, uh, 1350 feet per second. Have I knew that to begin with, there's a whole lot of tests here that I wouldn't have done, okay? Because a lot of the, the velocity here, like for example, the Lapois bullet has a lower ballistic coefficient than the Burger bullet, okay? And this is why I'm going with Burger and not Lapois. And the Lapois needs to go at 2700 at the muzzle, 2700 feet per second at the muzzle to be able to have that 1350 feet per second at a thousand yard. The burger bullet here 
because it's a little bit a little longer pointer or whatever it's uh, only, I only needed to leave the barrel at 2600 feet per second and now the the trouble is when I'm doing those the ladder test the node that I need to find need to be in that 2600 feet per second specifically for the burger and I did not reach a load with the Lapois in that range therefore I'm going with the burger okay I'm sure there are other powder that I could test, but again, this is post-COVID. There's still some scarcity here and here. A bit earlier, I was saying maybe a hunter who reloads or overthinking it, actually I do, I did, and uh, no, no more, is how much powder charge, so how, how, how much precision do you actually need for your hunting loads under reasonable, reasonable range, right? And let me show you, let me show you this group here. So this is the group of the ladder test that I just showed you with the 30, uh, 39 point four point six and point eight. And look at that. This is ten shots group, okay, which clocks at one inch, so that's one MOE. I had two grain of powder variants in these in these bullets, right? So the slowest bullet was uh, 2,534 and the fastest was 26 and 49. So I had over a hundred and some feet per second difference between these two. I mean, when I see that, honestly, I mean, we really, really, really don't need to think that through. Like, you could eyeball your powder charge <laughs> and still be okay, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm joking, don't do that, but it's like, if you roughly know how to fill up your case precisely, you don't even need to weight them. But I'm not advocating anyone to do that, okay? Keep your scale handy. And so, yeah, that's it, folks. This is where this one ends. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Don't miss part three. Incoming, we're going to talk about velocities, okay? Uh, how to read velocities, chronographs, Labradar, cat, the uh, Cadwell chronograph, and uh, magneto speed. Which one is what for you? Thank you so much for watching, folks. See you. Bye-bye.